this is Lee with Crash Test Hobby showing you how to build the fuselage for the Storm Chaser. Start by matching up the fuselage parts making sure that they are all right side up. You'll find the angles don't match if you have one upside down. I like to change the shape of the nose. We leave it square for those who want to put cameras and other things in it. But this is the typical trim that we do. We come in uh, one and a half inches and trim to the point and then four inches across the bottom three inches up and you'll see how this creates the shape on the nose. Now I used a hot wire to cut it but you can use an, a box knife, you can use a bandsaw, you can use whatever you want and the pieces pop off like this and that's the shape that I want for the nose of the plane. Some people just want to mount, mount cameras there so we've left it square. Now making again, sure again that all the parts are right side up we're now going to, on the front of the middle section, trace the pod for the motor. And using a razor blade, I put a clean cut down each side of the slit as deep as the pod is deep. Or you can use a soldering iron, I'll show you that too. And then put multiple slits through it so the foam will pop out. And then you can start pulling it out with needle nose pliers. Uh, in this particular case, I'm going to also show you by adjusting the tip of the soldering iron and pulling it out a bit. I can set the depth. And then using a straight edge, cut a slot with the soldering iron in order to also set the depth on the pod. We have used bigger pods in the past, but we found them to be too heavy. We have not seen any of these break. They're very durable and very simple to install. Now using the needle nose pliers uh, just pull that foam out and just uh, pop it loose and then I use a flat screwdriver and clean it out inside. Make sure the pot, pod sits flat in it. Now I'm going to glue the nose section back on and you notice those two black dots are just to make sure I get top to top on everything. And now I'm gluing the tail section on the fuselage. I make sure that the pod slides in. And make sure that it's square with the top of the fuselage. Now I've already installed some LED lights in this. I'll show you what they do later, but uh, that's something you just cut a slot and lay the lights down inside. But the tape is something you'll do on all the planes. Using a quarter inch bit I drill a hole for the dowel. The dowel will actually glow, glue to the pod and I push the dowel through. If it's not perfect on your drilling you'll be filling that with glue anyway. And Then I start putting extreme tape back from the nose of the plane about 14 inches. I put it on the top and the sides. This makes it so that if you crash the plane into something that it not only protects your radio and battery but the plane itself is very tough and very difficult to break on the nose. The extreme tape has over 150 pounds per inch strength and tear strength so it gives you a lot of durability without adding a tremendous amount of weight. With the solid fuselage like we're doing, it makes this a very strong front of an airplane, much more durable than about anything else you can do. You'll notice how I use a razor blade to cut relief slits around the edge. Now on this particular side, you can see the, the power line that goes to the LED lights. And I just put a small razor blade slit around there and, and uh, lay the tape flat around it. You don't have to make a perfect seam. This is going to be covered with laminate so you're not going to see all of these seams that are showing up right now uh, as you're putting the extreme tape on the fuselage. So going back to review, it's a strip all the way along the bottom and then just 14 inches back on the sides and the top. Now this is the light system that I've got in the bottom of the plane. I also put a similar system in the wing 
and these are programmable lights but uh, most people don't use these but thought you might like to see what uh, I had set up on this plane and what I was doing. Coming back I'm now punching a hole through the extreme tape just checking the dowel, checking the pod, making sure everything's right there. Now I'm measuring back to 24 inches from the nose where I'm going to put a wrap of extreme tape around where the back dowel goes. I'm measuring down three quarters of an inch uh, and then once again just drilling a hole through where the rear dowel will go. But this is something that I'm doing to make it so that that back dowel is well tied into the plane and won't just pull out of the foam at the top. We're actually quite proud with how durable these planes are. You won't find very many planes that fly this well that are this durable. Now we're going to trim the tail part of the plane. You'll notice there's already a pre-cut slit in there, but we're trimming it so that the a uh, horizontal stab will fit in there. You don't want it so that it interrupts the elevator that will be going up and down on the back. But I kind of clean it out with a soldering iron and make sure that the tail fits squarely back there. We're not going to glue the tail on yet because we're going to laminate the fuselage first. We check the temperature of the iron, make sure it's between 190 and 210 degrees. And I like to start on the top. You can do this any way you want. Some people cut smaller pieces and iron them on because they don't handle the larger piece as well. But I just start at the top and since it has doesn't have all the relief cuts it's easier to work your way down and around the plane. I'm going to show you the variety of relief cuts I'm doing here because I get questions asked on that. Uh, but you'll notice that I uh, I'm just overlapping the laminate as it comes in and uh, trimming off what I don't want. And I just work around the wires, cut a relief hole for that anytime I need to and then just just iron it down. I'm using a full size iron. Uh, some people like to use their hobby irons reason I you like the full-size iron is the temperature is more consistent. I have multiple small irons but they tend to have uh, more fluctuating temperature than the larger irons. You'll notice I just pulled the wire through and uh, iron around it. Now going back over I'm actually putting a double layer of laminate on the bottom. This protects both the fuselage and my LED light sets here. I just use a sharp pair of scissors or razor blade and just cut off the excess and then just seal the edge down. And it's just the, the trick is just knowing where to make your relief cuts. It's part of the reason I collect square corners rather than round corners is because you can get, uh, it's easier to match the relief cuts to a square corner. but it's fairly simple, straightforward. You get good at this after you've done a few planes. Now I'm going to show you the back of the plane, but you got the idea from the front. We don't need to show you every single angle. The one thing that is different here is I want raw foam to glue the elevator to at the back. So you'll notice that instead of laminating that back notch, I'm actually uh, opening it up so I have access to the foam there. and then just seal the edges down. The laminate sticks real well. The laminate also is a UV protection for the tape and the foam and makes your plane last longer. Now using my soldering iron I'm opening up the different holes where I'm going to glue things. The back hole on the top of the fuselage is just a glue access port but I put a fair amount of glue down in where the pod goes and then I push the pod in and I actually want the pod twisted a little bit to the left when you stand behind the plane. The, the pod should point towards the left front corner of the plane to compensate for prop torque. You can see my hand pointing at the corner that that should go and 
twisting that. The dowel going through is going to be a stop for that pod coming forward. And uh, as you can see, I'm working glue in around both sides. Just make sure my pod is lined up there. And then the back dowel, you notice I put the glue in there. I think I probably usually leave that dowel in and just sit and pump a little glue in and turn the dowel. Now this motor is a 3536, I believe, but I use 3530s, 3536s, and I'm running a 9-inch prop here. You can run a larger prop too, up to 10s or 11s, and we gave you enough post here to do that. Make some marks on where I'm going to put the screws. I usually like to put one screw in first and then just see how the motor looks sitting there and then put the bottom screw in afterwards. Drilling the second hole. I only put, have been putting two screws and as long as I've got a very good grip on those screws or even using some small bolts, I've never had trouble with the motor coming loose. And then make sure you have a half inch prop clearance at the bottom. And then just saw the pot off to whatever length you need. Now we're going to cut a slot for the radio. You want to leave the sides of this slot as thick as possible for the maximum amount of strength. If you cut them too thin, your uh, fuselage will be weak in the middle. But I do cut it narrow and deep. I usually cut them about three quarter inch wide and about 11 inches long. And just using a soldering iron so I get a clean cut through the laminate and back through the uh, extreme tape. I'm actually using the pod as my width uh, calculator and uh, put a pin in one end so that I can control the angle. And then we're going to pull the foam out of this slot. And this will be the place to speed control your receiver. If you've got like an OSD that you're going to be running on the FPV plane, uh, anything that's going will be in this slot. The servos will be installed behind the rear dowel, behind the wing, uh, with push rods that extend out to the elevator and rudder. Now uh, I want this deeper than the soldering iron could reach so I'm using my guide again and re running the barrel of the soldering iron on and using the tip even deeper to get deeper into the wing. Just make sure you don't cut through the bottom of the plane or do damage to your LED lights. Once again just going through I open up the slot in the bottom of the fuselage. And then using a flat screwdriver, I smooth out the bottom of the slot. Now this is what we're going to show on this video. I hope it helps. Uh, good luck with your plane. There are more videos coming to show you how to finish. Thank you very much. This is Lay with Crash Test Hobby.